YouTube as it go in the goat house is back with the commanders preview of what to watch players to watch games to watch and more we are doing this for every NFL team a playlist on the channel for all the teams that we have done so far comment on this video which team I should do next the Washington commanders are actually one of the more exciting young teams in in the league and what I think people don't realize is they are a lot different than the la the team we last saw from the commanders just a season ago Usually you can't have that much change from a season to season, but they are totally different, and that is a reason why they can be a little sneaky. It's a team to watch for the future. We're going to talk about a lot about that here in this video. Top three things to watch, what we could expect, what to get excited for. Number three, I think they're a very tough team to game plan for. I think they will be extremely tough to deal with the game plan for early on in the season. And every year I talk about all the time, you know, early season, there's always upsets of the unexpected and people are surprised. Usually those teams that are pulling off those upsets or winning games early are the teams that are the most difficult to game plan for because there really isn't a game plan for them. And I think commanders are one of the, one of those teams uh, to, for several reasons. Totally different coaches on both sides of the ball. I mean, starting with the head coach, Dan Quinn. It's a totally different defense than Ron Rivera's defense. Yeah, Rivera ran some man coverage, but ran a lot of zone, a lot of cover four specifically. Dan Quinn is uh, is one of the top man coverage defensive coaches in football. He's going to come in. He's going to do his thing. He's added some new players, some good new players on that defense to that, that can run his defense, that specifically fits his defense. So that alone, because of the scheme and because the new players on defense, those two different things makes them much different on defense. And you look at offense, they add a new quarterback, totally different quarterback, Jane Daniels. Uh, I think because you have to put a spy on him and his his running ability, I think that makes him a tough game plan. But it's just a totally different style of offense. They add Cliff Kingsbury. It, it should fit Daniel's play style. A lot of passing the ball. They add a pass catching back in Austin Eckler, even though I think we'll see Brian Robinson a bit still. Uh, different blocking scheme. Some new players there. It is completely different when you factor in like system slash scheme, the new coaches on both sides, the new players that they've added, the young players, um, you know, as fast as they could be as, uh, you know, they're not going to be one dimensional. That's going to make them an extremely tough game plan, but mainly because there really isn't any film on like what film do you watch on the commanders going into this year? You know, you're, you're going to watch. I mean, you can't really watch Jaden Daniels in college. I mean, you have to watch a little bit and see kind of what he does in specific situations. You watch Cliff Kingsbury's stint with the with the Cardinals. Uh, you you're gonna you can't really watch the Commanders from last year, even though they ha you can at all actually. So even even though they have some of the same players, like you got to try to learn Dan Quinn's defense based off his Cowboys defense. It's it's near impossible. So they might sneak some games off early on and and it's not going to just die off after the beginning of the season. So they that's a reason they could be a little sneaky, you know, a team to watch early on like how is this going to work? How teams are going how are they going to adjust to it? So going to be fun. I'm very curious to see how this defensive line alignment and rotation works, uh the interior and the edge. I I I think they have potential potential to mix and match different guys and, and off the edge there are some questions right now who's going to start who's going to take over are they good enough there I think like the key guy that stands out is Dorrance Armstrong who was a really solid rotation player young rotation player for Dan Quinn in Dallas and it felt like yeah he was deserving of starting but the problem was Demarcus Lawrence and Mike Parsons were ahead of him he's going to start so I think I, you know we feel pretty good about him is he going to be all world, you know, probably not. But we feel like he could be a pretty solid player for Dan Quinn. The question is the opposite side. I think they can try out different guys. They can give some different looks. Does uh, does KJ Henry step up from last year? I think he has some potential in the scheme. A lot of talk about Jamin Davis playing off the edge. He was uh, a linebacker, obviously, in Kentucky. He's been a linebacker. Obviously, Ron Rivera drafted him and hasn't really worked out. We know he's a freak athlete, explosive Um you know, probably could have been, I thought, you know, maybe Dan Quid would use him like in the blitzing game a bunch, but he brought in linebacks and do that. So yeah, essentially they are, they're going to try to rush him off the edge. So is there going to be looks with him? Is he going to be more of a stand up guy? Could he try to turn him into like a Micah Parsons? He's not going to be that good, but could he be that, you know, that freaky athlete linebacker turned edge? It, it kind of gets you excited because it is Dan Quinn, what he, what he did at Parsons. And he's, again, he's not going to be that good chances say, but you know, how they're going to use him, how they're going to rotate him in. And then you look at 
Deron Payne and Jonathan Allen from the inside. I mean, those are stud. That's a, that's a stud interior group, and that's how they'll start off. But Allen, in his career, he's actually played over the tackle. I mean, he, he can't put a pass in the plate off, off, play off the edge. So is there going to be looks where he's off the edge? And, you know, maybe when Newton's healthy, you got him inside. Uh, you know, Newton's a pretty good pass rusher for an interior player. So uh, you, you can move him around a bit. So I actually think... It, at first glance, it kind of looks like a basic defensive line, right? You you probably got Jonathan Allen, Dur- Jonathan Allen, Deron Payne on the inside, and then Dorrance Armstrong, whoever wins that battle, Cleveland Farrell, whoever it may be off the edge. But I'd say, because of everything I explained, not so fast. It could, could be a unique group. You can mix Jamin Davis in there. Does he start opposite of Armstrong? Again, you can slide Allen out. You have Newton that can move around a little bit. So, very curious the snaps these guys get, the different alignments they show in different in different scenarios, and you know how the rotation works. Very curious under with the players they have, but mainly because Dan Quinn's there on, on you know being under Dan Quinn. That's the good. The downside of hiring Dan Quinn was, yeah, older coach uh, has had a go before. A lot of these young younger coaches taking over, and the main thing is he's, he wasn't their first choice. You know, it, pretty obvious he wasn't their first choice, but. But he, he knows what he's doing. He's had some good success with the teams that he's been with. And he turns the defense around pretty much day one. Like, it's a totally different defense right away. Like, he's going to have the defense balling. So, a little bit more than just the edge group there. And then number one, I think this team has, has potential to have more balance in terms of throughout, throughout the roster, actually. Not just talking, like, passing and running game. Or I think they... they they're not going to be completely balanced in terms of their roster, but they definitely will have more balance than you think. And a lot of it is because the players they've added and the schemes they're kind of turning towards. You know, again, defense was underwhelming. Like there's been years where it's like they could have one of the better defenses in football. You know, because the players, the different, the, mainly because of the defensive line that they've had, and it's just extremely underwhelming under Ron Rivera. Um, and maybe some of the players didn't pan out like we thought they would. So it's not all on the coaching. Um, you know, I guess that factors in as well, but, uh, Dan Quinn's going to have, again, we just said it, Dan Quinn is going to come in and he's going to have the defense playing. He's going to have them playing. He's added good players looking at the linebacker position. He's added his guy, Dorrance Armstrong. They've, they've added other guys here and there. And then throughout the draft, they've, they did a very good job. They, they were probably one of the more improved teams throughout the entire off season as a whole. He's going to have the defense playing better. He, it's just what it's going to be. You know, is it going to be the Cowboys defense? It's unfair to say that, but he's going to have the defense playing his brand of defense and playing better. They're going to have some playmakers as guys getting their hands on the ball out there and they're going to, they're going to be doing like we kind of talking about different unique things that are going to throw teams off. And then offensively, you would think, you know, Jane Daniels is a rookie. He could have some growing pains. He could have some struggles, uh, but I, you would imagine he could play better than Sam Howell. Um, you know, even the passing attack could be a little more consistent, maybe a little more careful with the ball, hopefully, um, you know, but I, I, they should have, they should, even if Daniels has mistakes, which he probably will. They're going to have a passing game. I think with Robinson and Eckler, there should be somewhat of a running game. I, the offensive line should be better than it was last year. Not saying much. We're going to circle back to that in a sec in one second. But um, and we talked about the defense, so there should be more balance as a whole, making them more of a sneaky team. What I think it's on, like I don't think it's on this raw, like the entire roster. I, I think it's on. And it's really not fair to say it's all on Jaden Daniels playing great right now. We can't, we don't need, you don't need him, a rookie to play outstanding right away. You would love that. That'd be fantastic. So I'm not really saying he has to play great or like he has to play consistently good football right now or else. Not really saying that, but it a little bit is on him uh, on how good this team could be and the offensive line. The offensive line, like how much of a step up from last year is it and then going back to Jane we'll talk about Jane Daniels more in a second he's going to be on the players to watch a little bit of a spoiler so uh, by what we just talked about you could tell it's an exciting young team that could be a little sneaky and definitely tough to game plan for especially early on and I'm excited to watch the different looks that they can give on both sides of the ball uh the players to watch got a couple rookies Mikey Sane were still and I almost put Emmanuel Forbes in his spot almost for the same reasons uh they are play makers they get their hands on the ball in their college career and I think that could translate to Dan Quinn's defense and looking at Dan Quinn's defense Deron Bland breaking records getting his hands on the ball a ton and then Trevon Diggs was consistently a playmaker 
getting his hands on the ball, creating creating turnovers, you know, getting interceptions, bottom line. Um, Sanders still is a playmaker type guy. He's very instinctive. He can read the quarterback. He moves around the field everywhere. He gets downhill. He can blitz, but he gets his hands on the ball. Somebody on that Dan Quinn defense is going to be doing that. They're going to be a playmaker. And Forbes was such a good playmaker at the outside corner spot at Mississippi State. It could be him. The reason I put Sanders still on here is I'm very confident with him playing in the slot, we'll, you know, starting in the slot. We even can see him outside. Forbes, there's a chance he's not a starter. I hope he is, but there's a chance he's not a starter. So, you know, I, I'd rather put Sainer still there. But I, I think he's a, almost an underrated rookie right now before even playing because people want to talk about, you know, defensive rookie of the year. Who's it going to be? Is it going to be Latu, Turner, Murphy, you know, whoever it may be, one of those guys at the top uh, or one of those first round corners? They just look at the first round players, but this guy. Going into a, a role that like he's pro ready, like he's gonna go, he's probably gonna start in the slot. He goes to a great defensive mind uh, head coach, Dan Quinn. He's already a playmaker. Those types of guys thrive in that defense. Like if this guy tallies up some interceptions, which he very well could, he will be in that conversation. So definitely one to watch. A rookie here, but Forbes, you can slide in this spot, this spot if he uh, if he starts because he will probably get his hands in the ball a bit. Uh, and then number. Two, I'm going to go with Frankie Lavu. That was actually my number one signing in all of free agency. Not number one free agent, but number one signing based off fit, talent, contract, value of the contract. Frankie Lavu to the commanders. I think he's extremely underrated. He's a really solid linebacker that can cover, that can get downhill. But he also, also can be kind of like a Swiss Army Knife type player where, yeah, you can blitz him a ton. He's going to have production at any level from a linebacker, you know. And I, Dan Quinn's going to have some fun with that. They, they signed him early on. They had to have him for a reason. He's going to play really solid football. And actually, looking at the difference between Dan Quinn's Cowboys defense and the Commanders defense, yeah, we expect the Cowboys, one, to be better. They had Micah Parsons, Trevon Diggs, not last year because he was injured, but they had big-time players, you know, Demarcus Lawrence, uh, but the interior defensive line looks better here, but the linebackers as well, that was a big thing for the Cowboys, like ah, the linebackers in the interior defensive line, they were kind of holding them back. So the weaknesses for Dan Quinn's defense with Dallas is actually the strengths with Washington. So that is pretty interesting. So could they be as good where people aren't expecting them to be, you know, is that Dan Quinn Cowboys defense. Uh, I think it starts with Frank LeVu, an all-around linebacker that also can kind of be like a, a weapon. Like, usually don't say, you don't call linebackers weapons. I think you can with guys like Fred Warner, I suppose. Uh, but to me, LeVu is that weapon type of linebacker. So I'm very curious to see how Dan Quinn uses him, and he definitely could be a major factor in making this defense solid day one. And number one, you have to go with the rookie quarterback and Jaden Daniels. Uh, very curious to see how it translate translates because he was the best player in college football. So if you're like scouting for college football, like that's the best player in college football. But the NFL is a lot different. Um, but because they took who the best player is right now at that level and hoping it translates. They kind of view him as a pro-ready guy. So is he going to be like solid day one? But I do think it's going to be a learning curve for him. He's not going to be able to do some of the things he did with those receivers and be able to hold the ball that long and be able to run around like that. Um, you don't win big football games. you know. And he won passing the football too, so don't get me wrong. But um, where he was like, wow, is he threw the ball that that many times and that you know that many yards and he ran the ball that many times for that many yards. If you're not going to win football. And even they were a little underwhelming, they didn't, mainly because it was the defense at LSU. But, you know, running at that high of a level does not win you football games, especially in the NFL. So how is it all going to translate? Um, you know, is he going to be able to tell you a lot of time his first read was wide open? And if it wasn't, he would kind of take off. It's not going to work like that in the NFL. So you can argue he's kind of pro ready because he's experienced. He's learned from different schemes. He's always been very solid. He's there's so much to his game. It's a tough game plan. He's like, he was the best couch ball player. So the talent should translate right away. But, again, the transition, like we just explained, uh, is it going to be a more of a lengthier one? So it's kind of up in the air, a lot of questions there. And, again, I think this this coaching staff should should have this team playing, the roster playing pretty well. It's going to come down to the offensive line and the quarterback, in my opinion. Uh, and, and, yeah, kind of going to uh, Cliff Kingsbury, I, I, I think Daniels kind of fits in ways that Kyler Murray did, but he has a little bit more size, a little bit more length to him. Um, you know, so that should be pretty good. And, yeah, looking at 
and something I didn't mention, you know, Kingsbury's teams with the Cardinals, they were all they always started off so hot and Kyler Murray looked like an MVP type player and that kind of goes and they should be tougher they should be tougher to deal with early on in the season and it kind of goes with it. Maybe Kingsbury kind of brings that with them as well, but um I, Kingsbury wasn't great with the Cardinals. I thought he took a little bit more heat than he should have when it came to play calling. I think people ripped him for his play calling. I didn't really see that. He gambled a lot. I thought there was a lack of execution, which you can blame him for the lack of execution from the players. You can blame the players as well. Uh, but maybe they looked unprepared at times. You could definitely blame for that. Definitely deserve to be fired. But in terms of actual play calling, I didn't really have as much of an issue. So kind of touched on Kingsbury a little bit there. Uh, games to watch. Uh, love these ones, actually. And obviously the divisional games... Uh, you know, Eagles, Cowboys, always tough games. You got the, the Giants and the Commanders. They People rank them around the same range, or maybe their power rankings, we'll say. So you think both those teams got to take care of those games. But Cowboys will be big because Dan Quinn, uh, interesting game plan. But uh, focusing on the non-divisional games, the non so not-so-obvious ones, Bengals in Cincy, Week 3, I love this one. Yeah, you think, well, the Bengals, they're a lot better than the Commanders, you may say, and they should be healthy at this point. Uh, because it's early in the season and their issue is just durability long term. So, yeah, the Bengals should be a lot better. I agree, but what's going? What part of the season is it? Is a big factor here. Week three, like I said, the Commanders should be very difficult to game plan for and deal with early on. There's not much to go off of there. And the, what do the Bengals do? The Bengals, for some reason, every year struggle in the beginning of the year. Like they. They have to like adjust and they can't really figure it out. They look bad early in the year. So this is one the commanders actually could, you know, be you think of these two teams, the Bengals are better, but they, they should be able to upset if you want to call it an upset. I'm not really calling it at that at week three based on who these teams are in that range of the season. So I really think it's one they could sneak away with here if you want to call it that. And then a week later at Arizona, Cardinals should it could be tougher than people think. Uh, they're healthy at that point. Kyler Murray, you know, should be on the field, should be healthy. Uh, you know, and the Cliff Kingsbury factor here, the game plan. Uh, he possibly can game plan for Kyler Murray in that offense, and they possibly game plan for his offense. So that should be pretty interesting. Uh, so some big games there. Like to me, I'm gonna say like those are must wins for the Commanders early on. Like I didn't, they they, they got to go in there and win those games in week three and week four where they have that game plan factor, even though they're away. Uh, and I like the Titans game week 13. Like those are two like young, new, completely new on both sides of the ball, fresh, sneaky teams. Like there could be sneaky, sneaky teams that are a little tougher to deal with than you think both those teams. And if they have, and now people are going to go playoffs, but if they have any shot of the playoffs, I think they got to win this game. That's a battle there. Like they got to win that game to stay alive is my prediction about that time of the season week 13. Like it's going to be a must win. Maybe one of the teams will be struggling because how young they are and they'll be out of the race. But uh, I like that matchup down there in, in week 13. I also like the Bears one, Caleb Williams versus James Daniels. And then some fans takes. Uh, astronaut, greater emphasis on passing attack, underrated receivers, Cliff, Cliff Kingsbury's playbook. Yeah, we kind of touched on that a little bit. Um, yeah, the receiver rotation. Yeah, he talked about that as well. Like who's going to be receiver three? Uh, McCaffrey, they had to have him. It felt like a little bit of a reach, but he also is a safe, like safe player. Like he's gonna get open, he's gonna catch the ball. Like he's not super flashy, so it's a guy you kind of like. It did remind me for Kingsbury of a Kingsbury pick. Uh, hopefully, it's not like that, but it did remind me of when Kingsbury had to have Andy Isabella. So hopefully, it doesn't turn out like that. I think Deami Brown, a guy we expected to be a little bit better at this point. I think he could fit this Kingsbury and Jane Daniels offense a bit. So could he step up as receiver three? And Zacchaeus has been pretty, you know, nothing special, but pretty consistent. So, yeah, that's a good question. Like, who's going to be receiver three? Is it going to be, like, more of, a, like, a game-by-game game or who's feeling it, like, rotation type thing? We will see. Um, yeah, and then vastly improved interior defense, defense, you know, linebacker safety. And then for Dan Quinn, like we talked about in this video, a big step up for interior defense as well. Uh, but safety, yeah, we didn't touch on that, so it's good that he brought that up. Um, you know, Forrest de dealt with a little bit of injury, uh, injuries last year, and then Jeremy Chin, they add, who still has that upside. Really excited to see uh, what he does in this Dan Quinn defense. Could be like another Swiss Army Knife-type player uh, from Carolina. Interior defense line uh, rotation with Newton. Yeah, Newton had an injury, so that's why he dropped. When he's in, it should be a factor. 
uh, how do they use him and the other guys? It should be a lot of fun. Can the new DBs help mask the Forbes miss? Yeah, does Forbes start? Because it does feel like a Dan Quinn fit, but they have new DBs in there. Do they start? You know, it's a big questions there. And then fun one, he says, kicking position. Do they regret letting Sly walk? Who was fairly solid for them. Yeah, you wish the... You wish he was a little better, perfect world, but not too many great kickers. And uh, yeah, they kind of they move on from him, and they go, they you know they go with the younger guy. And they, how is that going to hurt? That's a good point. Like nobody really talks about that. Are they going to be hurt from kicking? Like could they be a better roster than expected, but they lose games because of kicking because they move? You know, are they going to regret that? Cameron Sullivan, Eckler, role in production. Yeah, and they brought him in. I thought it was a really good fit. Uh, you know, and they brought him in because he's a pass catch, good pass catching back. I thought he had a really bad year last year, actually, though, for him. Uh, but that's kind of what they needed. Do, does he start because he's experienced and they want to pass the ball a lot? But Brian Robinson's a better all around back. You know, do they start him? Uh, so how, how's that going to work out? How's that rotation going to be? LeVu and Wagner additions, you know, just major improvement. That's going to be a stud linebacker group there. Um, Improving from dead last passing defense last year. Yeah, I, I think it should be better just because it's a complete scheme change and you add um, some player, you add some good players, even the linebackers. I think that plays a part because they can cover, but having those guys on the inside, I think just really makes the guys in the back end jobs a little bit easier, but they are going to have to play a bit more. I think there'll be more of playmaking defense than they were last year. Rotating a big receiver core. Yeah, we kind of touched on that. Uh, takes Daniels has the best Rookie QB stats, mix of pro readiness and, um, okay, yeah, from trailing most games, you're getting that production. And then uh, Commanders finished last in division is his take. So battle with the Giants there. Both teams can be a little sneaky. Uh, depends on quarterback play from both. And then we have RS Swimmer 84, if that's what it is. Uh, Luke McCaffrey, top five receiver in this class. We could see, you could, I could see it. I, I'm not counting on it because all the good receivers, but just because, again, what is he? He's a, a guy that gets open and catches the ball. He's not super flashy, but he's a guy that gets open and catches the ball, so he should be pretty pro ready. He has a good chance to be receiver three, so maybe he's, you know, maybe won't be Nakua, but like a, that type of season. And Jamin Davis is an edge rusher, hits double digit sacks. Bold prediction there. We touched on it a little bit, but yeah, that's interesting. A, a freak athlete linebacker turning edge rusher. Uh, he's not Micah Parsons. He never was, never will be, but it's the same thing that Dan Quinn did with Micah Parsons. So that should be pretty, and they could use another edge rusher. So that should be pretty fun. LeVu makes all pro. I can see that. I can definitely see that. Um, what else is interesting? How much better is the culture coaching of this new era? I, I definitely think a step up there. Uh Definitely with defense, at least with defense. Uh, Teddy, use of Forbes. Yeah, we talked about that. Like, if he kind of fits Dan Quinn's defense, like, he, if he starts and he stays on the field, he will get some interceptions. He will get some interceptions there, I guess, the, the in man coverage. But uh, does he have the play strength to play against those NFL receivers in man coverage will be the question. Performance of the O-line additions. Yeah, we didn't touch on that enough. Um, they arguably had the worst offense line in football last year. I'd say probably Tennessee had the worst. I think the Commanders probably had the second worst. And before the year, I predicted the Commanders to have the worst. We always predict offensive lines. I predicted the Commanders 32, Tennessee 31, and they, they were right there. Yeah, they were right there. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, so that's a big question. The offensive line, the scheme should be a little bit different, I would think, from last year. Uh, with that O-line, so that could change things, and they've added a couple guys. Brandon Coleman's the interesting one because he was an inconsistent tackle. You see the upside, the strength, the length. Um, my issue was his hand placement was pretty bad, uh, and I thought he would fit more of a guard, and I think most teams did, but the commanders are in a situation where they might have to start him at tackle, uh, but he does have upside there. He will fit the scheme of Kingsbury. Um, so, yeah, Big 12 guys, uh, but... Yeah, so that's going to be interesting to see how, how much different the offensive line, if any, is from last year. It's a big question. J not Something we didn't talk about, Jane Daniels' durability. You kind of worry about that a little bit taking because he took some crazy hits. He ran into some hits, and that was a big issue for, I mean, different talent level and different player, but that was my issue at Matt Corral. Like, he would scramble into hits um, a bit, um, but they are different. But that's what I do worry about 
uh, with Daniels holding up there and with a not so great offense line, even though I do think it'll be better than last year. So that's something I forgot to touch on. So it's a good thing for the fans. Takes here. Yeah. Does he play the full season? And if he does, man, if he, if he misses even a game, it's going to be, people are going to be like, is this going to be an every year thing? Like, did they mess up taking this type of, like, it's going to be, I'm not saying I'm going to say that. It's going to be talked about a ton, you know, a ton. Um, we talked about a bit with a guy like Anthony Richardson, and he has that play style, but he never had the durability concerns in the past. Like So it's going to be talked about a bit if it happens with Daniels. So hopefully it does not happen uh, in year one, especially Jahan Dotson workload. I think he's got to be receiver two. Um, and then Jamin, yeah, another one with Jamin Davis being used uh, more off the edge. going to be fun. That's something to watch. I almost put him on players to watch. I just don't know how much he's going to be used. We did touch on him a bit, though. Um Content Taurus is the old line as bad as, as I think it'll be. Any hope for the big boys up front? Uh, sometimes a scheme change and coaching, uh, even from the same exact group, could change things. Uh, and they have a little bit different of a group here. It's it's not going to be good. It's not going to be a good group. I they were probably the second worst. If I, in my opinion. Just top of my head, I really I said at the end of the year too. Like I thought Tennessee and Washington had the worst. I think the Titans had the worst, um, and then Washington and other people claim their team their their team had the worst offense line. But I don't know if any other team were that close. There were some other bad ones to those teams. Top of my head, but I think they'll be better than last year. But it could still be a problem if there's no. If I had to say I've been doing this for a lot of teams too. If I just like what's like the biggest problem or like if they struggled this year, you saw the future, they struggled. What was the issue? I'd say maybe the offense line or Jaden Daniels, like didn't translate right away or he got injured. That'd probably be my two things, or maybe the edge group would be the next thing. But I think Dan Quinn will find unique ways to figure that out. O-line or quarterback. Uh, and then Jacoby Terry McLaurin continues to be the most slept on receiver in football. Jaden has eight rushing touchdowns, 18 pads, touch 12 interceptions. That's a pretty good, I think that's, Pretty decent prediction there. Pretty interesting one. Um, yeah, let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments. Anything like that, if you want to respond to any of these takes, my takes, their takes, any bold predictions, uh, love to hear it. Make sure to comment which team I should do next because that could possibly be when most comments wins. That could be the next the next video. So check out that playlist full of these videos on the channel. More to come, a lot to get to still. Uh, check out our sponsor, Liquid IV, code GOAT for a percentage off. It's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.